New research shows that people who get one of those breakthrough infections after receiving the COVID vaccine may acquire a, quote, super immunity to the virus. The study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association revealing that antibody levels from breakthrough infections were as much as 1,000 percent more effective than those seen two weeks after getting the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. And Dr. Reed Tuxin is the co-founder of the Black Coalition Against COVID. He's also the former health commissioner in Washington, D.C. Dr. Tuxin, um, what is it about this combination of vaccine and breakthrough infections that produces a super immunity to the virus? And, and do you believe the research in this case? I think the research is important. Uh, we'll certainly want to follow it more carefully, particularly because this particular study did not focus uh, specifically on the Omicron variant. However, what it is saying is, number one, that the more exposure you have to vaccines combined with if you in fact become ill, that your antibody response becomes what they're describing as a super event. The thing we have to remember is that the key is to have an initial foundation of vaccination and boostering. Then if you are unfortunate enough to have a breakthrough infection, that seems to augment your system even better. The point we do not want people to take away from a study like this, though, uh, Dell, is that it's okay to just simply go out there and get sick, uh, unprotected from vaccination, uh, and then hope that your antibody level will be uh, enough to overcome uh, the Omicron. That does not what this data is saying, and we want to be very careful not to misread it. Dr. Tuxin, uh, I want to get your, your take on the political nature of this virus. You and I have known each other since AIDS, since I, HIV AIDS. And correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of those of us who do what I do are spending an awful lot of time being armchair quarterbacks to those of you who do what you do. Do you remember with regards to HIV there being this much scrutiny under everything that the CDC said and did, variants, breakthroughs, viruses, antivirals, et cetera? There is no question, uh, Dell, that, as you will recall, there was great concern and anxiety, mainly because then we did not have a rapid scientific explanation of what was causing this disease and then how to manage it. Similarly, you had the issues of sexuality and substance abuse that complicated. But even with those variables, we have never seen what we are seeing now. Uh, the choices that we are making as a society, the choices that we have to make, are, are unprecedented in terms of trying to evaluate various risks uh, for uh, our behaviors and our decisions and what the outcomes will be of those choices. Meanwhile, we have never had this overlay of a pandering to the public to do things uh, against their own best self-interest and somehow have that pandering to not doing what is in your best self-interest to become a political plus for many people running for office, particularly those in the Republican Party. This is unprecedented. And lastly, I would say, Dell, what is also unprecedented is such a callous disregard for human life. We have simply decided as a nation that the economy, the economics, the politics are more important than whether or not vulnerable people shall live or die. And that is something that bodes very concerning for the rest of this, uh, of this new year and the years to come. I want to get uh, our audience caught up with the breaking news that came on when we were on the air this morning. The FDA authorizing the Pfizer booster shot for kids aged 12 to 15. The CDC is expected to rule on whether it will give the OK later this week. Uh, it will be given five months after the second dose. Your thoughts on this development? I am really excited by this. It will be, you may recall, Dell, that it was on May 1st when the FDA expanded the use of vaccines for the 12 to 15 year old group. So now they have been uh, come November uh, eligible at six months for that booster. And now that we're moving up to five means that kids that started getting vaccinated in October uh, are going to be eligible uh, for, this, uh, for this booster. And it's so, it's so important because we are seeing an, uh, uh, an incredible uptick in the number of kids affected and the number of kids that are hospitalized. Meanwhile, the push is stronger than ever to get our kids back into schools despite the overwhelming impact of Omicron. So we really do need to get these kids now vaccinated. And now that they are eligible, the push needs to be on rapidly. And don't 
forget that it is the booster that is giving us the protection against Omicron. It is having two doses of the Pfizer Moderna, a full dose of the J&J, combined with the boosters, which is giving us the benefit overcoming uh, the Omicron effect. Hospitalizations are up 31% from last week, but deaths are down by 37%. Are we looking at rounding a curve now with regards to COVID? And I know that sends chills up and down your neck because predictions in this case have been very, very uh, toxic to say the very least. The good news in your question, Dell, is that um, it is true that the Omicron variant is not as lethal as the Delta variant not as lethal compared to what? And that's the issue. The Omicron variant is still a terribly lethal and extraordinarily dangerous variant on, on, on COVID. And so we are glad to see that hospital, while the hospitalizations are up, uh, that the uh, death rate is down, do the math and look at how fast this is exploding. We're probably headed somewhere, perhaps as close to a million cases a day. You think about how many of those people are going to be immunocompromised, in poor health, or simply unlucky. And those death rates are going to be higher than any of us would have wanted or could have conceived of. So this is a dangerous, dangerous few weeks and few months. Dr. Reed Tuxen, the former health commissioner in Washington, D.C. Dr. Tuxen, as always, thanks for being with us and guiding us through these, these perilous times. We are not done yet.